So when I was first introduced to acrylic paints, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Oh, 350 cent, get rich or die trying. I have locks now, but I was lazy with my hair, okay? Um, I was on birth control pills, so that also caused me to gain weight. I was having acne. Like I told you, I was damaging my hair. So if there's any like young girls who, who was watching this, I just want to tell you, boo. Knock, 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 Hey, hey creators, welcome back to the studio. I'm Aramis the artist. Y'all, I am super happy to be back. Your girl is looking tan and melanated, okay? I had a long weekend away and was able to just rest and restore. And during that time, I was reflecting on some possible video ideas for you all. And this one came to mind. One of the most common questions that I'm asked is, how do I find my artistic style? How did I really like discover my artistic voice? So I feel like this would be a really good time to go deep and to go back with y'all. Since we're building over here on the tube, I would love for you all to get to know me more. I would love to get to know you all more as well. And along this journey, I'm gonna be sprinkling in tips because truly, I feel like I found my artistic voice throughout every experience that I had in life, all of that has influenced my work in some way. So maybe this will be similar for you as well. So nestle in tight, grab you a cup of tea, and let's hop into the video. Let's get the obvious out the way, okay? Your girl is hitting up this 70s vibe. So you all know this is the scarf design that I've been working on forever. They are finally up and live ready to go. This is the long silk one. So I got my little boho hippie vibe going on and your girl has always been like just wild free spirit child ever since I was young. So let's start with my childhood. So I was like most kids who just love to create, love like getting, getting her hands dirty. I was a tomboy, I was super messy. Uh, my dad actually called me his son daughter because I was just always helping him around the house. My dad was a super huge inspiration for me. And you all know that a lot of my work is inspired by music and he is a musician. He pretty much played every instrument. We always had music playing in the house. You got Al Green, Whitney Houston, uh, James Brown, Salt and Pepper, Biggie, Tupac, Lauryn Hill, the whole, the whole spectrum. Okay, I feel like it was just always music going in our house and that just influenced so much of what I like to listen to now and how I translate that into my art. Now my mom, she was the photo lady. Okay, she was always taking pictures. There was always pictures all over our house. So I remember taking some of those family photos and trying to draw them. And I was probably around like 11 or 12 when this happened. And that's when I started to see that I actually really love portrait drawing. And I, I would show my mom and I'm like, look at my, she's like, oh, this is, this is kind of good. This actually looks like the photo. Um, so that's when I started to discover that I actually really had um, a knack for figurative drawing and for portraits. And actually, now that I think about it, I was I was selling my art back then, y'all. Okay, so I used to write people's name in bubble letters and I would sell those for a quarter so that I could buy some flaming Hots. Like that was my, <laughs> your girl been an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's so funny. Actually, some of my friends still have that. I mean, this is like elementary school. This was even in junior high. Yeah, this was back in the day when, when a small bag of chips was actually a quarter. I think now they're like 33 cents now, which is like, Stop robbing the kids, okay? <laughs> the next stage of life that heavily influenced me was of course the teens, okay? Your girl is a Gemini, okay? Circa 1989. So coming up in June, I'll be turning 32, which is, <laughs> which is crazy, okay, she's still um, one big kid. But, so I feel like high school for, for me was the crunk era, okay? It was the Yin Yang Twins, Lil John and the East Side Boys, it was Nelly, it was Ludacris, it was just like the hype time of the crunk juice, okay? Y'all remember the whisper song? Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something you might like to hear. Too young to be singing those songs though. Oh my God, me and Andy was just talking about get rich or die trying. Y'all, you need to understand, I entered high school 03, okay? 03, 50 cent, mini men? Your girl was a thug, okay? <laughs> like, I, was, I remember like being on the bus and like listening to my headphones like. Mini men. Wish death upon me. me. Like really, you're 14. Who's wishing death upon you? <laughs> <laughs> that era of music. <laughs> 
So the kids call it twerking now. We were juking. We were juking, y'all. Juke, juke, juke. I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. So house music was huge for us and house parties was where it would go down, okay? Sweating in somebody's basement. So I love music, love dancing. And I think this was the time when I really started to discover color. The entire time that I was drawing family portraits, this is all with pencil and like graphite, sometimes color pencil, but for the most part that it was all black and white. So in high school is when I was introduced to acrylic paints. I remember my sophomore year, arts fundamental teachers, Miss Wargo, she was absolutely amazing. So back then, I just did the basic art assignments that every high school uh, student did, right? You know, we had we had basic things where we had to draw ourselves, we had to find some other photo and draw that. We worked with landscapes, you know, just like the standard high, high school stuff. But high school was a time when I felt like my creativity was actually cultivated. So moving on from Miss Wargo, then like my junior year of high school, had a phenomenal art teacher, Mr. Pateki, okay? I remember Mr. Pateki. He was like the coolest art teacher ever. And him and Miss Wargo was, was somebody who, who really pointed out like, mm, this Aramis girl, she's actually kind of kind of good. Let's put her in AP art classes. So I was recommended to take AP art class, which I was really excited about. Um, and yeah, I just, I just really started to ex explore acrylic paints. What's crazy is when I started using acrylic paints, I did not like them at all. I just wasn't able to have the control that I was used to with pencils and color pencils. So I really, really had to work at it. And what's crazy now is that I actually love that freedom that acrylic paints provide me with. It's just this pouring process where I'm just letting the universe guide the paint. Y'all know my creative process. If you are new here, welcome boo. <laughs> you should check out some of my other studio vlogs where I share a lot more of my painting process. But you all know that I love to lay the canvas down, pour paint all over it. But back in the day, I wanted to be able to control every single detail that was being put on the piece of paper, on the canvas. And so when I was first introduced to acrylic paints, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's moving, shifting, blending, bleeding, like hold on, hold on, you know? But over time and with a whole lot of practice, um, I started to fall in love with it. But the reason that I even kept going with acrylic paints is because I was like, I was addicted to the color. I feel like I wasn't able to get as bold of a color saturation with color pencils. It just wasn't an option, but acrylic paints, I was like, wow, like this red is red. This blue is blue. In the midst of me falling in love with all of these like bold color saturations, I was getting so frustrated trying to blend skin tones. Either it was too red or it was too pink or it was too orange. I was like, this is frustrating. So I was like, what if I try to just use the colors that's straight from the bottle, whether that's pure blue or pure purple, let's give it a try. So I painted one of my classmates uh, blue and I was like, ooh, this is nice. Like this is something that's really speaking to me. And then from there, I just started to pick random colors that I wanted to, to paint people as. So I was painting people red, orange, blue, purple, pretty much every color, but not the color that they were supposed to be. <laughs> and some of my classmates was like, oh, this this is cool, this is cool. And, and But part of it really started off as just me being frustrated with not being able to paint skin tones. Um, and now I just love painting people in so many different colors and so many different shades because it's something that just truly speaks to me now. So our high school was really cool where it had all these different opportunities to show your work and have art shows and actually won a pretty big national art competition um, where I had the opportunity to fly out to Washington and my artwork was up at the Capitol. I had went out with my mom. It was absolutely amazing. It was my senior year of high school that we were on the Capitol steps and to think now what has gone down at the Capitol is crazy. <laughs> My, have the times have changed. Yeah, high school was a pretty pivotal year for me. That was also the year of 2007 of me graduating. Um, oh, and Kanye, oh, Kanye. The grad, speaking of graduation, the graduation came out in 2007, y'all. The love for Kanye and Chi-Town in 07 was insane, City. okay? From my end, the love was real for Kanye. <sighs> we know today today he's a different yay and that's and that's okay you know he is 
we're all a work in progress. But, okay, class of 07, the graduation came out, Kanye dropped the album, your girl cut her hair, okay? (laughs) This was a time when I did my first big chop. Now y'all, back in, oh, now what's so great, especially like I'm sharing this on YouTube, which feels like such a full circle moment since there's so many natural hair YouTubers that inspire me on my journey. But if y'all remember, 07 was not a popping year for natural hair, okay? Like now it's a whole movement. It's like a billion dollar industry. You have all these like influencers, all these different hair products. 07, no sis. My family was like, what are you doing with your hair? Okay, because uh, you need to lay, lay them edges down. 07 was a time when I, well, I was just really, was really transforming and really stepping into my own identity to a certain extent. Because now that I've given you all the background about me being in high school and winning all these awards and being in these AP art classes, I'm sitting in my AP art class with all these students who are preparing their portfolios to go to art school. And I'm sitting in this class knowing that I'm actually gonna be going to nursing school. And that's when we head off to college. College is when I really put my art on the back burner. Not off the stove, just on the back burner. Now that I look back, I actually realized that I explored a lot more other aspects of my creativity in college, which was a whole lot of fun. She did a couple open mic nights, won a couple uh, contests for spoken word, which was really fun. I sewed and designed costumes for a play. We performed in talent shows, y'all. Like my, I had a phenomenal college experience. It was so much fun. I made so many phenomenal relationships. It's kind of frustrating when I think back knowing that I'm I'm not even working as a nurse anymore, but I feel like college is, y'all, college is not really even about getting that degree. (laughs) It's not, I'm sorry. But college is amazing for building relationships and connections and just having experiences. And your girl had experiences, okay? I could drink you under the table and I could dance you under the rug, okay? And (laughs) I'm a mess. So now 07, freshman year, I'm in college. We still trying to figure it out, right? Like just about all freshmen are taking the same classes no matter what um, major you have. Now, sophomore year is when you split up and start to figure out, okay, this is gonna be my actual major. Sophomore year for me was 2008. And we all know what happened in 2008, the Great Recession. So if I even had an inkling of possibly doing something else, it was like, yeah, no. We all need to find a secure job and something that is stable. All of my family were was, were in the healthcare profession at some point. So my mom has been a ER nurse for over like 25 years and I just love helping people and I would just see how much she would help people. So I was like, okay, let's do nursing. It definitely felt right for me at that time. So I was just working in college to become a nurse. Even though my art was on the back burner, once I got an apartment, that's when I was actually able to create. So this was junior and senior year of college was when I started to actually Pull my paints back out. Your girl was working as a CNA. She had a little bit of coin, a little extra to spare. So I started to buy my own paints and I started to paint in our living room. This was actually, was this my first commission? Oh, this was my first commission. I actually did a painting for one of my guidance counselors in college. He was getting a divorce and he wanted um, a painting that included his divorce papers, long long story, okay? That's that's his business. But that was actually one of my first commissions and I painted that in my living room. Um, Well, look, our our living room. I had a phenomenal roommate, she was a sweetheart. It's funny because people would come over to, like I was the host, y'all, okay? We was always throwing house parties, come over and over to our spot, we got the drinks, we got, we we got everything, everything you need, okay? Look, I feel like it's not right of me to not include music. So many different chapters of my life was influenced by music. And now 2008, y'all, Jamie hit the street. Y'all remember? Now, like, I need, I need to know who, who is who is with me on this, okay? Comment, let me know. Do y'all remember when Jamie hit the streets with his album, Intuition? Blame it. Oh, blame it on the goose. Like, blame it on the goose. <laughs> got you feeling loose. Now, my drink in college was Captain and Cup. Okay, <laughs> Captain and Coke was for your girl, okay? And so when Jamie hit the streets with intuition, this is when Drake hit the streets too. Yeah, 09, best I ever had? You know, can we, girls. can somebody give me some snaps in the comments for the years of like 2007 to like 2011? Cause I remember like 2010, Nicki Minaj came, just like Young Money 
came hard during my college era, and that's why I have so much love for Drake, I have so much love for Nicki. <sighs> Wayne. Okay, now I know he he's a he's a different Wheezy, but back then, Wheezy F baby, please say the baby. Okay, <laughs> please. <laughs> Bro was my guy. Lollipop, lollipop hit in uh -huh. two thousand nine, I think. Banger. My college experience was made by the music I was listening to. And when Nikki hit the streets, yeah, she was Barbie. She was like doing the most, but I was just really enamored by her colors, by her hues, by her saturations. And now, honestly, look, I'ma say it. I'ma look. I feel like all of the current female hip hop rappers today, all I see is Nikki. I, I truly do. I feel like a lot of them are just really trying to imitate her or be her. And I know every every generation has their thing because I know my mom would probably say she look at Nikki and probably all she sees is Lil' Kim or salt and pepper. And then like grandma would probably be like, I just see Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan had that wild red hair, you know? So it's like everybody has their thing. But for me, these new girls is just trying to be like Nikki. I said it, I said it, I said it. You can at me. <laughs> so when Nikki came out, I was like, ooh, look at these pinks. Look at these teals. Look at all of these colors. And I'm still influenced a lot by those colors today, as you all can see throughout my work. And what's interesting, I feel like like Nikki has like toned it down a little bit. Like she's like matured and like, you know, she's she has black hair. She's looking all sophist the funk. But it's because so many people have been trying to bite her. She's like, I gotta switch it up. I can't be giving y'all the pink print, okay? <laughs> I see too many biters out here. Do you, boo? Overall, college was a blast. But to be real, I actually didn't create that much. I was showing my art actually. I did do an art show. Once the word started to get out that I was an artist, people were asking me to show my work. So there were a few events in college where I did showcase my work. And this was also the time where I was having a lot of fun artistically with my hair. But now your girl, see, I, I have locks now and I'll probably share more about that later on in the video. But I was lazy with my hair, okay? I dyed it red. I was big red around campus, y'all, okay? Your girl had the big red fro. It was colorful, it was bright. It damaged my hair though. Now I know some people like colors, some people don't. I think when you have colored hair, you have to take care of it. For me, your girl did not take care of it. So I damaged my hair. So when I did graduate college, I did another big chop for my college graduation. And I was like, let's, let's, let's cut all this off. Let's have a fresh start. And I'm talking about hair because hair also influences my work. And I've really had a long hair journey that I can do a whole nother video on if you all are interested in that. But also hair inspired me to make the scarves where you all can put them on your head. You can tie your hair up at night. You can have like a hair wrap. Part of the thing for me creating the scarves was truly influenced by my hair journey. Even though college was so much fun for me, this was like the first time that I actually struggled with my weight. Freshman 15? Yeah, no. Your girl had a freshman 30 on her. I was, and actually our, like one of my dorms freshman year, we lived right above the, the cafeteria. So it was just constantly food, constant snacks, constant everything. And of course you in this new environment, obviously y'all know what I was doing during college, not putting the most positive things into my vessel. So this was like the first time when I really struggled with my body, with my appearance, with self-love, with self-confidence. Um, I was on birth control pills, so that also caused me to gain weight. I was having acne, like my, I told you I was damaging my hair. I was just like, ah, what is this? I was just going, and, I, and of course, right, like we all go through those transitions. So if there's any like young girls who, who was watching this, I just wanna tell you, boo, Hang in there, your glow up will be real, okay? Take care of yourself, but also know that this is the beginning of your journey and there is so much more ahead. And it's just like, I wish young girls knew more about the hormonal fluctuations that take place in, in their body during different points of their life. So many women have gone through it. And so sometimes we'll we'll see people on YouTube or like Instagram, and they're like, oh my gosh, she's like so pretty. Honey boo, <laughs> she, look, I'm gonna I'm I'm put wherever pics I can find. It has been a journey getting here. And this is part one of a video that I plan on sharing more about my transformation and hopefully like inspiring you all as well. It's been long and I'm still in that journey now. And I feel like probably like reading some of you all's comments and hearing some of you all's feedback will help inspire me for the next video. But 
I just want to let the little brown skinned girl know out there who was dealing with some of the things that I was dealing with at that time that boo, this is not your end point. This is gonna be a journey. It's so hard being in that like cat that like caterpillar phase, y'all. It's 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 hard. It's hard. And um, but what was helpful for me was when I did move into my own apartment. That's when I was able to cook my own food. I was able to pour positive and healthy nutrition back into my body. And that's when things start to transform when I actually properly took care of myself. And that's gonna be a whole nother video. But 2011, graduated from college, and now this is post-graduation, which I call pre-adulting because your girl was not adulting yet and I had a long journey ahead to figure out who I wanted to be what my artistic voice was gonna be and if I even was gonna have an artistic voice she graduated y'all popped bottles celebrated yes we got our apartment we're set um and so and actually I haven't even mentioned Andy in this y'all mind you my husband Andy <laughs> We met back in high school um, and we're obviously married now. We've been together since I was 17, since my senior year of high school, went to prom together, uh, college, a little on and off, got a little rocky, a little on and off, but then we brought it back on, okay? And we're still together to this day. So we got an apartment, High Park, y'all, this was like my first like adult apartment, okay? She was 21, she was feeling herself, she had her job. So post-graduation, I was working as a critical care nurse. I was really excited to go straight into critical care. They really don't let new grass into, into critical care, but I had a little family hookup, okay? I told you I had a lot of family who was in healthcare, so it actually worked out really good. So from there, um, it was a struggle. The struggle was real, but I think that this was one of the most pivotal moments for me in my life because I had an up close experience with death. And yeah, for me, what's interesting, I know that, um, some people can have trouble talking about death, but I've I've just had so many experiences with death. It just feels just as natural um, as life. But at that time when I was 21, it was just like, whoa, this was truly um, a moment for me where I was sitting at the bedside with people during some of their last moments. And I started to reflect on my life and I started to see like, is this what I really wanna do? So it was just, it was a really transformational experience for me. Um, and I'm so grateful that I had that moment at such a young age, which I feel like really inspired me to make the shift when I did. So in those moments, having those upfront confrontations with my own mortality i was like is this how i want to live my life like is this is this what i want to do with my life um and i was struggling emotionally mentally and so i would come home uh and paint in my living room so that was my own art therapy i had a little section set up in the corner uh and i would i would paint there some of the things that i was painting back in the day was musicians so this is when i was actually painting portraits of erica badu um outcast gil scott heron Miles Davis, my dad was a huge Miles Davis fan. I see a lot of young artists painting, like painting or drawing portraits of celebrities, which I think is phenomenal. I mean, that's that's truly where I started, but there comes a point when you now can start to expand your mind and start to pull things from your own imagination, but we all have to start somewhere, right? So I feel like um, that's literally exactly where, where I started. But what was exciting about this time when I finally had my apartment, uh, we lived on like this like basement unit which was that's a whole nother video okay about our about this damn apartment i was excited about it but it had a whole lot of drawbacks but one of the positives was that we lived on the basement unit so our back door opened up to to this alley yeah okay <laughs> the positive was that um that is when i started to play with spray paint i would start painting this piece in my living room and i would just carry the canvas out to the back door and would spray paint and start to explore using different textures, using different mediums. And so this is why I think that a studio space is so profound for artists. I feel like I was really able to, to stretch the boundaries of my creativity when I actually had the space to do so. And so, um, yeah, I just, I just wanna encourage artists out there that 
no matter what, start where you are. All of my creative journeys have started in somebody's living room, okay? <laughs> whether that was my mom's living room, whether that was my shared college apartment with, with my roommate, to finally my own living room that I was sharing with my boyfriend, now husband, and now to officially a full studio. So it's been a journey getting here, and I wanna let you all know that I haven't always had like a, you know, 500 square foot uh, studio that I should probably do a whole nother video on like just the journey of all of my studios throughout my career where I've actually been paying rent. Uh, this is my fifth studio and I absolutely love it. It is my, it is the biggest studio by far, but literally your girl started by spray painting canvases in the alley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just went on a whole little side tangent with that, but taking it back to nursing. So really I would work in the hospital setting, get frustrated, have a whole little ordeal with cardiologists and doctors. I was tired of fighting with people. Okay. Coming home to my corner of my apartment and just painting was truly my therapeutic release. And um, shout out to my girl, Kiera, okay? Like this is, I always tell y'all, hang around high vibe people. And this is truly one of my besties back in Chicago. She started my Instagram account, okay? So she, I remember she came to my apartment. She was taking pictures of my paintings, her and my friend, Ed, Edward Cotton. Shout out to him too, okay? Both of them came to my apartment and just saw all these canvases piled up. They're like, girl, what, what is this? Like, are you, are you painting here? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of just something that I'm doing. Uh, so my, my friend Kiera, she's like, have you heard about this thing called Instagram? I'm like, I don't, girl, I don't know what Instagram is. Like, what is that? This was 2012 is when she started my Instagram account. She's like, here, let me show you. This is where people are like sharing pictures, sharing photos and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Maybe this could be a place where I can like share me dancing and hiking with Andy and maybe some, some of my art here and there. So I actually have a lot of those photos still up y'all from like 2012 and 2013. So if you scroll all the way back, if you scroll all the way back, you can see some of that. But I remember, this is so crazy even thinking that this is so fun for me. Okay, <laughs> look, I hope y'all are enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying it. She was sitting on my couch and she was like, um, yo, what do you want your uh, name to be? I was like, um, I don't know, can it be uh, Miss? She was like, no, it has to be something longer. Like I was thinking like Miss, like just M-I-S, that's what my friends would call me, Miss. Miss, Miss. She was like, no, girl, it has to be something longer. I was like, okay, what about Miss Liberation? I have a liberation tattoo and y'all know how, how I feel about liberation breaking the chains, freeing your mind. Um, and so she was like, okay, cool, we gonna do. She's like, oh, I, I, I think somebody had like Miss Liberation or something. So we had to put the underscore. So it was Miss underscore Liberation. And that has been my Instagram name since I started my channel back then until I finally changed it, which was, yeah, just just last year in 2020. I think I actually changed it to A.O. Hamer uh, so that I could be fully branded throughout all of my platforms. I like literally just changed that in April, which is crazy considering how long I've been a full-time artist, you know, <laughs> to have to have some random name that I just created on the couch with my bestie in Chicago is crazy. So she came into my apartment and just saw all these paintings. I was like, girl, post this stuff. Like, have, this is amazing. She was posting it on Facebook for me and people was just commenting like it was just all this love and all this great feedback and I was like oh okay like okay maybe I'll share it <laughs> you know <laughs> which is crazy y'all this this is life okay this this is how it works okay oh we got the light shifting is that a wait so I started to share my work more I got excited to kind of share what I was working on and it's crazy thinking about that now because the Graham fam has truly changed my life and I'm just so grateful for y'all and to know that it was just built so organically in that way and where like my friend helped help me do that it's just it's truly amazing one of my early pieces that I shared on Instagram was a portrait that I did of Kendra Kendrick Lamar. Y'all, this is when Good Kid Mad City dropped. Okay, I was already a big Kendrick Lamar fan. His mixtape Section 80 had came out. We was always popping ADHD, rigor mortis, like people, people weren't ready. And what's crazy is like, you know, look, Midwest, East Coast, they slower to pick up on the West Coast music, right? I feel like whatever region the artist originates from, which makes sense, that city is gonna know about them first. So Kendrick was West Coast. So I feel like it was taking a minute for him to come over to the Midwest, but we had some family in Cali who was putting us on West Coast music. So that's so that's how we had knew about Kendrick. So I feel like personally, I was already on Kendrick before everybody knew about Kendrick, okay? But Good Kid Mad City dropped when we were living in Chicago. What year was this? 
I don't know. Look, y'all, I, I took notes, okay? If anybody thinks that your girl's coming off the dome with all of this, we are not. <laughs> we took some notes. I can't remember what year Good Kid Mad City came out, but loved it. Oh my God, loved it. I'll say Money Trees was the song that inspired the portrait that I had painted of Kendrick uh, back then. Now I'll, I'll find a photo and maybe put that up. And actually that was when I had, I was early in my lock journey. I actually started my locks in November of 2011. So it's actually coming up on, yeah, so this November, it'll be 10 years that I've been locked. Locked but set free, okay, <laughs> look, for real. But you all know that I trimmed my hair dur during quarantine. I think maybe I took Maybe I took about four to five inches off and now it's it's all it's all coming back. I feel like it's all it's all coming back. Um, but yeah, I started my lock journey then. They were really thin, really, really small, which like worked for the look and worked for the aesthetic then. But over time I was like, mm, I just love thick and full chunky locks. So I had been, so I had started combining them throughout the years. And so when I actually did do, do the big chop, not the big chop, but when I, when I actually did trim them uh, during quarantine, a lot of what I trimmed off was those like three headed dragons, like the pieces that I had combined. And now I'm left with the solid thick ones that I absolutely love and I'm just super excited that I'm my own lock goals you know <laughs> but I was super inspired by Kendrick Lamar when he came out with his good kid Matt City album but now that I think about it Kendrick was actually the first painting that I created with chains ah wow he wasn't the first piece that I sold with chains because actually that Kendrick Lamar portrait is a piece that's not for sale. I'm like, I'm keeping it. That's one of my personal pieces that's a part of my collection. Um, so really the first piece that I created with chains that was like available to the public was Icy. And Icy really brings me to like current day Seattle. I feel like this video is gonna be really long and I know I'm gonna be doing a part two where I go into more depth. I don't wanna go too far off the rails and I actually want to answer some of you all's specific questions. So if some of this stuff is inspiring questions, drop them in the comments. Let me know y'all because I'm gonna definitely come back with a part two. Um, but let me, let me tell you a little bit more about the transition to Seattle and how that influenced my work. What inspired me to move out to Seattle was school. I've always been in school. I love learning. I'm always taking some class or some course or like reading about something on YouTube. And what's crazy is that I was already in school. So taking it a little further back, while, while I'm still working as a critical care nurse, at this point, I'm in school at Loyola University in Chicago, studying to become a nurse practitioner with a cardiovascular subspecialty. Yeah, y'all, your girl, your girl wanted all the credentials, okay? <laughs> I was going for it, going for it hard. And I distinctly remember sitting in this master's program, taking an advanced pathophysiology class and the instructor breaking down the stress cascade. And he talked about this originator of stress. So here you have this ball of stress. And he talked about all of the systemic events that take place in the body. Okay, so from cortisol being released, how this causes inflammation in the body, how this causes blood vessels to constrict, how this causes melatonin to decrease, and then you have insomnia, like all of these things. Like he broke down this entire, this entire thing of like all of these symptoms that can come from, from stress and like, I'm just like, oh my God, like, wow. I didn't even realize so many um, like endocrine hormonal changes that take place in the body from stress. I was truly amazed. And so then the next conversation was, okay, here are the medications that we give to treat all of these symptoms. And I was just like, wait, wait, you mean, you mean we, get, we got the stress up here? and all these symptoms and we're about to we're about to give medication for all the symptoms what about the stress like can we, can we if we eliminate stress we'll eliminate all of these other factors right so why are we not getting to the root of the problem 
And so from there is when I knew, and of course a whole lot of other stuff as well. I actually shared a lot more of this stuff in different podcasts that I've been on and those will be coming to y'all soon. I'm gonna share some links when those become available. But there was just so many things that was going on that felt like this Western medicine modality was not in alignment with what I feel like could actually truly help and heal people. And that's when I learned about Bastyr University. So Bastyr University um, is a naturopathic medicine school that's out here in Washington. And I was like, that is where I need to go. So before I actually made the giant leap to move across the country, um, I took one of their summer programs. During that summer program was when I fell in love with Washington, y'all, okay? I absolutely fell in love. I met so many amazing people. We were out in nature, we were hiking, we were learning about different herbs, different natural modalities to heal people. Um, we learned about nutrition and how to cook healthy meals. But it was like a two week program where, oh, and this is when I had got my first acupuncture needle. I just learned so much about natural medicine that I was like, wow, this feels right. Like this feels like we're actually getting to the target, which is the stress, which is okay, how can we, and how can we aid our body in a way where it can actually heal itself. So I was just so enamored by that. And I was like, I, I had went back home to Chicago and I was like, bang, I'm moving, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He said, we moving. I say, okay, okay, look, <laughs> you invited, you can come too. I wasn't gonna pressure you, but you can come. So, Andy came with me. He's super supportive. He's truly amazing. Uh, and so when I moved out here to Seattle, everything changed. Now that I'm in Seattle, I'm meeting so many amazing people, seeing the trees, seeing the mountains, just falling in love with this city. And what was so profound was that I actually met working artists. I met actual people who were professional artists and it seemed very accessible for me. Like these were people that I was like meeting at, at art shows, meeting at coffee shops. I was like, oh, like what do you do? Oh, you're an artist? Oh, cool. I'm like, I've kind of just been doing that in my living room for, the, for quite a few years. Like I, I had never met like actual professional working artists. And, and then the actual possibility of art being a viable career was introduced when I met all of these amazing artists. But mind you, I moved out here to go to school. <laughs> so I was still in school and I found another nursing job that was out here in Washington. I was working as a medical telemetry nurse. And during this time, I was doing both, working in the hospital and going to school <laughs> uh, and painting in my living room. And of course the living, I feel like start where you can. I've painted in so many living rooms, It's it's been crazy. So, uh, but in the midst of moving out here, Everywhere I go, your girl got to set up shop. I have to create a space for me to express. I've truly just been a creator. That's this truly who I am. Uh, and that's my happy place when I'm creating. And so whenever I'm stressed, when I was stressed at work, when I was stressed at school, I would come home to our Seattle apartment and just paint and create. And this is when I was getting a whole lot more messy, okay? I was pouring paint everywhere, completely destroying the apartment. No, we didn't get our security deposit back when we moved out of that place. But uh, yeah, I was really excited to be able to create. And then I finally, it could be a whole nother video talking about the actual moment when I decided to transition from nursing. But mind you, this was a journey. It was about a two to three year transition from me working as a nurse to me finally going full time. And I had some of the dates wrong when I when I was talking to, to my friend Gabrielle in her podcast. And I was like, Ugh, can we can we correct this? Um, so I actually my last day of working in the hospital was May it was like May or March of 2016. So I've actually been doing this uh, about five years full time, which is crazy. I think, I feel like I've been saying I've been full time for the past three. <laughs> it's been five years since the last time I worked as a nurse. And I feel like the past three years is when I've actually been really doing art as a profession successfully. <laughs> you know, like those those beginning years was just like a rocky roller coaster of me just trying to figure it out. And that can be like the whole part two of, of this video. 2016 was a huge pivotal year for me. And that was actually when I got my first mural commission. I painted a mural for KEXP Radio out here. It was it was at Seattle Center on First Avenue in Republican. It was 130 feet long, and y'all, that was my first. That was the first mural that I ever painted. 
that I ever painted. Okay, that that could be a whole nother conversation <laughs> for how massive of an undertaking this mural was for me, but it truly did change my life because I felt like it was the mural that introduced me to the Seattle art scene. I feel like, you know, as an artist, you always have to have your little thing. Yeah. The next one, um, I just feel like the mural is gonna keep getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to Do you know how he, this is going to be super huge? Yeah, super huge. Yeah, you know, backdrops and the pair of projects on there. So, you know, it's just, you're going to be inspiring a lot of kids. And that is the mural that brought a lot of, so some of you all here was like the first time seeing my work was seeing uh, the big purple goddess that was in front of the radio station in downtown Seattle. So it was such a huge pivotal year for me. Um, and I love that piece because I felt like I was really able to incorporate all of the elements elements that I've been building up for this long. So she was this big purple goddess. She had the chains, she had music, she had the evergreen trees, she had the cosmos, she had the galaxies. And so actually the other thing that I had um, discovered moving out here to Seattle, when it comes down to cosmos and galaxies, I started to explore more of my meditation practice. I really started to develop more like better um, self care practices, um, really started to get into my like spiritual um, practices as well. So I felt like that opened up this entire cosmic space for me. There was just so many transformational moments that influence my work but I want to let you all know that finding your artistic style is a journey it's really not even about finding it I think it's about truly creating it it comes from your experiences and I'm constantly looking about different things that influence me and actually during this time when I had moved out here to Seattle I think this was around the time when Beyonce broke the internet okay now we know the Bay Queen has had a long long journey but I feel like when Beyonce broke the internet y'all know what album I'm talking about oh yeah Beyonce <laughs> like it was her it was her herself titled album and I've I've always been a Beyonce listener right she was a pop star but now I feel like she's she's in a different category now <laughs> in such a magical way uh y'all know I'm a huge Beyonce fan respect I feel like I, I fan fan just doesn't just doesn't even feel right. I feel like I just have respect for her work ethic, for her artistry, for her talents. And when she dropped this album, I was here for it. Okay, so really, tw actually, yeah, 2013. So 2013, 2014. This is also when I was going even hard with Kendrick, cause Kendrick was going hard. All the TDE, SZA was coming through, J Rock was coming through. So it was just so many things that was inspiring my work. And for Beyonce to step into her unapologetic black girl magicness, we teach girls to shrink. I say yes, sis. To make we need smart. more of this. So I remember painting a piece uh, inspired by Surfboard. Okay, the the piece was actually called surfboard so many things are inspired by my life experiences what i'm listening to um y'all i actually got a whole two more pages of notes but i feel like i'm gonna put a pin in this video because there is definitely gonna be a part two and this is just this is just opening the door for you all to to get to know a little bit about my journey and how it's inspired my work and maybe it sparked something within you about your work your creative path how you can find your artistic voice let me know in the comments if any of this resonates with y'all let me know if there was any 50 cent fans out there okay or if y'all was listening to Ludacris, who, whoever y'all was listening to back in the early 2000s, let me know. I just have to say thank you to y'all. I see all the love on the videos, all the comments. Shout out to y'all who were really interested in becoming AO ambassadors. I was replying there, but if you did not see it, if you're interested in becoming an AO ambassador, one, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, Go to the last video, you can see all those details there. But two, if you are interested, make sure you send an email to heyboo at aohammer.com and just throw in the subject line, AO Ambassador, and we'll send you all the information from there. I'm beyond geek to just build this community with y'all. This is just the beginning and there's so many exciting things that I'm super geek to share. What I'm really excited to share is that there is a new video that is also available for the Patreon community. So shout out to the patrons that hold me down, y'all. The Patreon community, ah, has been growing and like it makes me 
super happy and super nervous at the same time, but there's a special announcement that is waiting over there for y'all on Patreon. If you interested in joining the co-creator table, I'm gonna tell y'all more about that. You can head over to patreon.com and join us over there as well. Thank y'all so much. I'm just like, uh, I'm just beaming. I'm super excited. I'm excited to come with the heat, y'all, and to come with some intentional heat. So if you down, if you here to build with me, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio today. And remember, if you like this video, like it, and I'll see you all next week. No, it's not, no. Look, this is the South Side of the suburbs of Chicago, okay? Have, look, have her calm down. Knock, knock.